Welcome to this reflection on behalf of Kidderminster Izmir Team Ministry. Thank you for listening. I hope you will find the time useful and a blessing. I have a question to start. How do you see prayer? Is it just a quick gabble through the Lord's Prayer and the colics on a Sunday? Is it something you do when all else fails? Or is it something you do because you love the person you're talking to and you want to have a deeper relationship with them? Is it something you do because you trust the person you're talking to? Is it something you do because you know that person answers prayer? I'd like to start with a little story. I don't know how true it is or not, but it's a nice little story anyway. And it goes like this. There was an elderly woman who prayed every day and she saw her Lord and Saviour in very much the terms as at the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, Abba Father, otherwise Daddy. And she was on her own, but she would draw a chair up opposite and talk to the chair as if the Lord was sitting in it. One day, while she was praying, the two burglars came to her door. And one was just on the point of breaking in when he stopped. What have you stopped for, said his accomplice? Because there's somebody else in there. What do you mean? She's always on her own. Well, she isn't today. She's talking to somebody and it's a man. Probably not a true story, but a good illustration of an easy relationship. I'd like to go slightly further with this one and I want to start by looking at a couple of passages of scripture. Because as well as that easy relationship, if you really trust somebody, you won't be scared to ask. And the first passage of scripture I want us to look at is Luke chapter 11. And it comes straight after the Lord's Prayer, actually, and it says this. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You would say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. He would call out of his bedroom, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and we are all in bed. I can't help you out this time. But I tell you this, though you wouldn't do it as a friend, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you what you want. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will be given. Keep on looking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and the door is open to those who knock. You fathers, if your child asks for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. If you sinful people know how to give good gifts, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And then I want to move on to Luke 18. And this is the story of the persistent widow. There was a judge in a certain city who was a godless man with great contempt for everyone. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly appealing for justice against someone who had harmed her and the judge ignored her but eventually she wore him out. I fear neither God nor man, he said to himself, but this woman is driving me crazy. I am going to see that she gets what she wants because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. So God is in this situation through Jesus is telling us that we need to be persistent in our prayer and yet at times I think some of us feel that we can't do it I've heard so many times in my life that things like this oh I can't ask God for that it's too trivial I'm not good enough he won't listen to me I don't believe he answers prayer. 
Oh, that's a good one. The world is set in stone. God has set things out. He knows the beginning from the end. My prayers are not going to change anything. Really? I'd like to take you back to Genesis and Exodus, to the number of times that God threatened that he was going to annihilate the Israelites because yet again they'd annoyed him to distraction. And yet Moses pleads with him and the people survive. And time and time again through scripture you see through prayer that God intervenes. And God expects us as his children to act like children. You think about it. Those of you who have had children, you know what they're like. You take them into a supermarket and they see something they want and they will go on and go on and go on. And yes, you know that you shouldn't give way. But I bet many of you have. And this is what this is about. Being persistent in prayer. And yet there's another one there as well. And I'd just like to touch on this because, again, it's just a little sideline in this particular passage. But Jesus is commenting about if you ask your father or those that are fathers there are being asked by their children for something. Now, this is really a reference to the Jewish sense of practical joking. Because I think we all take that passage at face value about if you ask for a fish, he won't give you a snake. But in Israel, and certainly at the time of Christ, in the Sea of Galilee, there was a serpent fish. And that fish, in fact, was poisonous. But it was a fish. A scorpion, again, there was a certain type that would roll up and look like an egg. And though um, in this particular scripture, in Luke, it doesn't refer to it, but in another passage in the Gospels, it refers to giving a stone for bread. And there was a flat stone in the desert that looked just like a loaf of bread. Now, if you were a joker, you perhaps give that to somebody if you're playing practical jokes. But if you were a parent, you wouldn't do that. If your child was hungry, you wouldn't give them those things. And Jesus remarks at that point, if you wouldn't give that to your child, God isn't going to dump a load of rubbish on you when you pray to him. He's going to bless you. And persistence is the thing that perhaps we're not very good at as Christians. Holding on, believing and saying, well, God, you haven't done it yet, but I believe you're going to. Remember Jacob, when he meets that person who perhaps is God and he wants a blessing and he said, until you bless me, I will not let you go. And Jacob ends up with his thigh being put out of joint, but he still gets his blessing. Praying till daybreak. And I know in the time of the Welsh Revival and afterwards that people would have all night prayer meetings, praying that God would actually do something, and he did. I have a lovely example of this in our own household of persistence paying off. As most of you know, I've got three dogs. And when it comes to meal time, the older one will just lie down there and perhaps give me a very soulful look. The second one, who I say should, we should have called a Marilyn, because she climbs on my lap and actually stops me from getting up to do anything about it. I call her Marilyn because I reckon she's blonde, glamorous, but not got much between the ears. And then there's the third one. And the third one will start whimpering, then barking, then pouring me, then making a racket, making a rumpus with the other dogs, being a general nuisance until I get up and feed her. Which one do you think I take the most notice of? The one that gives me the most aggro. And I think as a lesson in prayer, that is a good one. And I'll go back over the other two dogs because the one that is sitting on my lap 
and is obstructing me is also a good example. That negativity. God can't do anything very much. He wouldn't want to be bothered with me. I'm not very good. He's never going to answer my prayers. And by our own negativity sometimes we can obstruct God in what he would do for us. He wants to give us a blessing. He wants to bless our lives. He wants to do things for us. Not always in a material way. Although don't rule that out. God at times can meet needs and does. I've seen it too many times to know that's not fact. In my Bible I have the words prayer changes things. And it was Bishop Temple that said when you pray coincidences happen. The other dog just lies there and looks. He's trusting. He knows that sooner or later he's going to get fed. But really and truthfully if he stayed like there without the others I would probably forget about him although God will never forget about us. Perhaps he gives a good example of the fact that sometimes we do not really realise the immediacy of what we need to pray for. So if you need something, pray. Pray till things shine through. Keep praying. Keep holding on. Don't give up. Don't get despondent. God will answer in his time. And yes, it may not be the answer that we're looking for, but the answer that we get will be for the one for our own good. Our Heavenly Father cares for us. All things work together for good, the scripture says. All things. So please remember that. And start praying. Start believing. One time I used to help train medical sales reps. And I would say to them before they went into a shop, expect to get a sale. Because if you don't, you won't. Okay, you might expect and won't get. But if you don't expect at all, you certainly won't. Because that negativity will show through. Be positive in your prayer. Pray for others and those around you. Your prayer Yes, pray for yourselves, and it's right that we should, and God makes that clear, that we are to. But praying for others and their needs is also part of our ministry. And there's a lovely little verse at the end of Job, which I'd like to share with you if you haven't seen it. And it goes like this. Bear in mind all the things that Job had been through, and he was getting back to normal, but it hadn't quite happened. It says this. And when Job prayed for his friends God blessed him it was then that everything came back and he was more blessed than he had been before his trials and tribulations before I finish this I would like to just share with you a couple of poems one of them is was given to me many years ago on a card although I've got it in a book here now by an elderly friend when we were living in Dorking. She was housebound, but she prayed, and boy, did I know that she prayed. That prayer really supported us. And the prayer, this little poem goes like this God answers prayer, it's called. I know not by what methods rare, but this I know. God answers prayer. I know not when he sends the word that tells us fervent prayer is heard. I know it cometh soon or late. Therefore, we need to pray and wait. I know not if the blessing sought will come in just the guise I thought. I leave my prayers with him alone, who wills, whose will is wiser than mine own. And then just something to encourage you. Because you prayed, God touched our weary bodies with his power and gave us strength for many a trying hour, in which we might have faltered had not you, our intercessors, faithful, been and true. Because you prayed, 
God touched our eager fingers with his skill, enabled us to do his blessed will. With scalpel, suture, bandage, better still, he healed the sick, the wounded, cured the ill. Because you prayed, God touched our lips with coals from altar fire, gave spirit fullness and did so inspire that when we spoke, sin blinded souls did see, sin chains were broken, captives were made free. Because you prayed, the dwellers in the dark have found the light, the glad good news has banished heathen might. The message of the cross so long delayed has brought them life at last, because you prayed. Shall we just have a word of prayer together at this point? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for prayer. Help us to remember that you are our friend and that you are always there wanting to speak with us, wanting to hear from us, wanting to bless us. And none of us are too lowly or too bad or our requests are too trivial for you to want to hear and answer. Help us to remember that you care for us, you love us and you want the best for us, now and for eternity. Amen. Thank you for listening again. I hope you found this time a blessing. Amen. <laughs>